Hello techies In this session we will test our knowledge on DLP policies in Power Platform Admin Center All right what is the question asked in PL500 exam If you see on my screen the question is that a company stores confidential documents in a SharePoint document library A developer must create an automation solution in default environment that process documents from the sharepoint library and uploads approved documents to azure file storage for archiving purpose the automation must meet the following requirements first one prevent modification or deletion of approved documents from azure file storage second one prevent sharing of documents from SharePoint or Azure file storage. You need to configure a data loss prevention DLP policy. Which five actions should you perform in sequence? There, if you observe the key points in this question, the first one is that the environment is the default environment, right? And you can see we have to create a DLP policy. That is data loss prevention policy. And if you observe, there are three connectors available. First one is the SharePoint library. Second one, approval connector. Third one is Azure file storage. These are the three connectors which we are going to use it. All right. Before answering the question, we will learn how to create a DLP policy on the given scenario. And additionally, we will learn how to configure connector actions. All right. As we know DLP policies are defined to protect data by decision making without being exposed to anyone these policies are called as data loss prevention policies that is DLP policies now how can we go ahead and we'll create a DLP policy let me switch to the browser and then we are going to navigate to admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com once we are logged in with our credentials we will get the menu on the left hand side all right if you expand the policies over there there you will find data policies let's click on that once you click on the data policies there you can see i will find create and manage connector policies to protect data within our organization so we are going to create a policy by clicking on new policy from here onwards we will see all the steps to create the dlp policies the first one is that name your policy I'm going to give the name over here as Azure File Storage Prevention Policy. Now, this is my first step to create the policy so that I'm going to give the name over here. Right now, let me click on next. As part of our scenario that we are having three connectors. What are the connectors? First one is the SharePoint. Second one, Azure File Storage. Third one is the approval right where we'll find all these connectors at the time of creation of the new policy all will be find inside my non-business category let me select that there you can see in my non-business category i'm having 1263 connectors out of that i'm first one i'm going to select azure file storage where i'm going to select it and then i'm going to move to the business in the same way approval i'm going to select the approvals and then I'm going to move to the business. Third one is the SharePoint. I'm going to select the SharePoint and then I'm going to move to the business. Why we are going to move these three connectors? Because our automation will work on these three connectors so that I'm going to move these three connectors to the business. Now, if you go for the business category, I'm having three connectors over here, such as SharePoint, approvals and Azure storage. Now, if you observe in our question there are two requirements which we need to follow so in the first one we don't want to modify or delete of approved documents of the azure file story right so how can we go ahead and we, we can prevent it i'm going to select this azure file storage and then you can see over here i'm having more actions and then i'm going to click on configure connector from there you can find connection actions i'm going to select that and there you can see I am having multiple actions on the connectors such as you can see there are create file copy file delete file extract archive to folder and many more so now we have to prevent the modification or deletion how can we go ahead and do that there you can see I'm having update file so that the allowed is that 
it is yes right now. Now I'm going to make it as no. In the same way, I'm going to delete the file. I'm going to make it as no. Now coming to the another requirement, prevent sharing of documents from SharePoint or Azure file storage. So if you want to get the information or metadata there, you can see get file content using path. It is all as yes, right? So that I'm going to disable this get file content, get file content using path. These two actions, I'm going to disable it as part of the second requirement. And then I'm going to click on save. Now you have to observe one thing. You can configure actions for all blockable connectors, but not for the unblockable connectors and custom connectors. What does that mean over here? If you observe over here, the name unblockable. So if you see the blockable is yes for the Azure file storage. In that case, and you can configure connector over there. But whereas if it is no, we cannot configure the connectors. Let me show you that. I'm going to select blockable as no for the approvals, right? It is already there. So that I'm going to click on more actions. And there you can see configure connectors have been disabled. In a such a way, we can configure the connector actions only for the blockable connectors. All right. Now let me click on next. Now, if you're coming to the custom connector patterns, I'm going to give data group as ignore and I have given it as pattern as store. Okay, now let me click on next. Now coming to the environment over here, a developer must create an automation solution in the default environment. There you can see in the defined scope, I want to add all the environments. No, I want to add the specific environment that is default environment, right? So that I'm going to select add multiple environments. And then I'm going to click on next. Now in the add environments, I'm having two environments over here. The contest is the default one, which I need to add to my policy. I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to add to the policy, which is the default one. There you can see add to policy. I got it the default environment, right? Let me click on next. Now as a final step, I'm going to review and create the policy. There you can see I'm having policy name and then what are the pre-built connectors that is assigning connectors. I'm having three connectors inside my business category. And then if you see custom connector pattern, one pattern has been added and the scope, you can see add multiple environments inside my environments. I have given the default environment, correct? Now I'm going to create the environment by clicking on create policy. Now a new policy has created successfully. There you can see Azure file storage prevention policy has created successfully inside my data policies. All right. I hope you understand how to create a DLP policy. And also we have seen how to configure connectors as part of the DLP policies. Now let me go back to the PL 500 question. There you can see I'm having eight actions over there such as set the policy scope to the exclude certain environments and add the default environment. So we are not going to exclude the certain environment. We are going to add multiple environments. So the first option we are not going to use as part of our sequence. Now coming to the second one, add the SharePoint and approval connectors to the business category and add Azure file storage connector to the block category. Of course, we are going to add SharePoint and approval connectors to the business category. Along with that, we are going to add Azure file storage connector to the business category. The second option is not correct. Now, going for the third one, configure Azure file storage connector actions. Yes, we are going to configure Azure file storages to prevent sharing the files, correct? To delete or modify the files. Correct. So that I'm going to use configure Azure file storage connector actions. Now coming to the fourth action, set the policy scope to add multiple environments and add the default environment. Correct. We're going to select add multiple environments and at the environment, we're going to select default environment. The fourth action is correct. Now coming to the fifth action, add the SharePoint Azure file storage and approval connectors to the business category. Yes we have added these three connectors to the business category. Now coming to the sixth action, add the SharePoint Azure file storage and approval connectors to the non-business category. We are adding to the business category, not for the non-business category. So that sixth action is wrong. And then confirm and save the policy 
as a final one we are going to review and create the policy that is the last step we are going to use it at the time of creation a policy right this our action also we are going to use it and final action is that create a new policy data policy in the microsoft power platform admin center yes to create a new data policy we are going to use microsoft power platform admin center out of these eight actions we have to give five actions in sequence let me reveal the answer there you can see first one is create a new data policy in the microsoft power platform admin center second one add the sharepoint azure file storage and approval connectors to the business category third one we are going to configure azure file storage connector actions fourth one set the policy scope to add multiple environments and add the default environment that is the fourth action and final action is that confirm and save the policy all right i hope you understand how to create the dlp policy and also we have seen how to configure the connector with connector actions as part of this tutorial